Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Energy and Resources and asks, does he stand by all his recent statements? The Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Speaker, assuming that the member and I agree on what recent means, yes. <laughs> Charles Chevelle. <laughs> question. Uh, does the Minister stand by his comments yesterday in the press that the decision to change the boundaries of the Otiaki Conservation Park was not made at the behest of LNDM Mining? The Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, yes. Uh, what I can tell the member is that LNDM Mining, I discover, made a submission to a discussion document published by the previous government's Conservation Minister in which they did point out that they had an interest in that area. Charles Chevelle. Question. Thank you, Mr Speaker. So can he confirm to the House that he was advised by his department that, quote, the successful development of the Hawkden project is contingent on L&M gaining access to the entire lignite resource, end quote? The Honourable Jerry Brunner. Uh, Mr Speaker, I had a discussion on this matter with uh, the Conservation Minister on the 12th of March of 2009. I received a number of documents on that day. Uh, they were departmental documents. They were not, they were not representations from l and Mining to me. Point of order, Charles Chevelle. Uh, Mr Speaker, my question specifically asked the Minister about advice he'd received from his department, not other representations and nothing about his meeting with the Minister for Conservation. So I'd ask uh, if, you, if, if, if it's appropriate to put the question again, I will, sir, but I would like to ask that the question be addressed. Point of, speaking of the point of order, I presume uh, the Mr. Honourable Mr. Speaker, I would point out that the member's question on the order sheet is incredibly general. And for members to set down a sort of a very general question and then expect the Minister to be able to answer very detailed questions about a particular application, in my view, goes the bounds, beyond the bounds of what is good order in the House. Speaking to the point of order, I'll hear from the Honourable Member further. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Minister was able to uh, begin his answer with a very specific reference to a date uh, on which he had a meeting with another Minister. I think he's well prepared to answer the questions. And as I said, sir, this is a specific question about advice received from the Department. Order. I, uh, I think the point made by the Honourable Dr Nick Smith is a very fair point, that where members put down very uh, broad uh, primary questions, it's then very difficult to expect a minister to have information to give a precise answer to supplementaries that are much more specific. Um, however, the, the question the member is asking did not seem to be one that required specific technical information. It seemed that he was asking whether the minister had received advice. Now, it's possible the minister cannot recollect that, or, but uh, uh, because of the concern over the, the fact that the minister seemed to refer to discussion with a, another minister rather than advice from officials, to me the, way to, the easiest way for me to sort this out is to allow the minister to repeat his question, the member to repeat his question, but I'd like it to be exactly the same question, not changed. To speak it. Uh, was the Minister advised by his department that, quote, the successful development of the Hawkden project is contingent on L and M gaining access to the entire lignite resource? End quote. Honourable Chair Brown. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'll give the same answer I gave before. On the, 27th, on the 12th of March, I met with the Minister of Conservation to discuss this matter. I received on that day, or thereabouts, my office probably received before I got it, uh, a, a number of official documents relating to this matter. That could well have been some of the advice. I don't have a, a, a memory of that. I have a memory of the meeting. Supplementary question, Charles Chagall. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does the Minister recall receiving any advice that was prefaced with the words, quote, L and M has advised, end quote, and does he stand by his statement, quote, we had no representation from L and M mining. I want to make that very, very clear, end quote. The Honourable Drew Brownlee. Mr Speaker, uh, my comment was in relation to an allegation that L and M mining had lobbied me directly. They had not. They made a representation through the proper process that was set up by the previous government's Minister of Conservation. The allegation, sir, is made in a website blog 
uh, which of course has run out of the third floor of the Parliament buildings by the Labor Party, paid for by the EPMU. I have no, nothing to hide here. I was Point not order. lobbied by the mining order. company. Point of order, Charles Chevelle. Uh, Mr Speaker, my question was quite a confined one about whether the Minister recalled receiving a specific piece of advice. I think the answer has gone well wide of the mark. Order. order. I accept that the answer went well wide of the mark, but I think in fairness on this occasion I say to Charles Chevelle that what he asked was for very specific information on a primary question, does he stand by all his recent statements? And I think it would be unreasonable to expect any minister to be able to recollect uh, some of the information that the, the member was seeking with that specific primary question. I, I think in fairness, if a member wants that kind of specificity uh, addressed in a supplementary question, the primary question needs to be somewhat more specific than this one. Charles Chevelle, supplementary question. question. Mr Speaker, does the minister recall receiving the advice to which I've alluded in my previous questions in a briefing dated 16 December 2008 and was this before the meeting that he requested with the Minister of Conservation to discuss the rezoning of the Otiaki Conservation Park? Uh, Mr Speaker, I don't recall the exact uh, timings of that uh, at the present time. Uh, what I can say to the, to the member though is that I've made no secret of the fact that I think New Zealand should make more of its mineral resources. I think the lignite deposits in Southland offer this country an extraordinary opportunity. And I did lobby the Minister for Conservation to leave out 200 of the 70,000 hectares that have gone into that conservation park. I did that because I think it's good for this country and I've got nothing to hide. Question. Charles Chevell. Order. And thank goodness for that, Mr Order. Speaker. <laughs> Order. I don't blame the member when you get an interject, one gets an interjection like that. It would be helpful not to interject quite so loudly. Uh, Charles Chevelle. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Order. Did the Minister meet with the Minister of Conservation in February 2009 after receiving the advice referred to in the previous questions to discuss the impact of the proposal to change the park boundaries on the Hawkton lignite deposit? And was the area that was crucial for the Hawkton project in fact the area that was excluded from the boundaries of the park when those new boundaries were announced by Tim Grocer in April 2009? Uh, no, and yes. Supplementary question, the Honourable Tim Grocer. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, does uh, the Minister recall during the uh, many conversations uh, the two of us had as Ministers of the day that the burden of the advice we received was as follows, that there was almost no chance of this project being commercially viable and going ahead, that there were far more prospective areas which were more likely to go ahead, but the underlying issue was were we going to lock away for future generations the opportunity to revisit this and instead have a park of 64,800 hectares rather than 65,000 hectares? The Honourable Jerry Browning. <laughs> Charles Chevelle. Supplementary question, Mr Speaker. Was the Minister advised of any other commercial parties interested in the Hawkton deposit? And if not... Does he stand by his comments that the decision to change the boundaries of the Atiaki Conservation Park was not made at the behest of l and Mining? Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, I was not aware or was not lobbied by any mining company with regards to that 200 hectare block. I was, however, lobbied by the Department of Con Conservation uh, to drop my suggestion that it should be left out on the basis that if we were to realign the boundary, the toilet block would be on the wrong side of the road. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Point of order, Charles Chevelle. Uh, Mr Speaker. Order. The member's own colleagues call the point of order. Charles Chevelle. Bearing in mind your previous comments uh, about the uh, breadth of the questions and answers, sir, uh, I did ask very specifically, was the Minister aware of any other commercial interests other than l &Ms in the Hawkton lignite deposit. I, I do ask the Minister to address that question. Order. I, I think I'd ask the member to be reasonable because put himself in the place of the Minister. If the Minister did try to answer that question 
And without having any preparation for the specific